Hello Year 7, we are looking at our home learning uh, project, experiment practical for the introductory topic and you can see there that our big question today is, is there a pattern in the relationship between the volume of water and the time taken to boil? So we've got a measuring jug, if you don't have a measuring jug you could use an egg cup or um, a yogurt carton or anything that's kind of a small container and you can have one container full, two, three, four, five, six. So if you don't have a measuring cylinder at home, you can still do this homework. All you need to do is just have a container and just use multiples of that container and we'll be able to do a graph with that at school, no problem at all. Okay, we've got a saucepan here that's cold, it's just come out the cupboard and it's really important that we get that cold again when we use it the second time. So you can see here, controlled variables, we're always going to use a cold pan, we're always going to use cold water out the tap and we're always going to use the same heat setting on the hob. So on the hob we can uh, dial it up, I don't have mine, um, mine doesn't have numbers on it but I'm always going to have it on exactly the same setting and I'll show you that in a second, okay? So we're going to use the measuring jug to measure the volume of water you want to use. I think I'm probably going to start off with maybe 100 milliliters of water and then I might go 200, 300, 400, 500. Now we have got six spaces on the table. I would like you to fill at least five of them because five allows us enough data to get a pattern in our results when we draw a graph which we're going to do in school. Okay so I'm going to start with 100, 200, 300, 4, 5 and 600 mil which I'm actually going to have to fill this jug up to the 500 and then add a further 100 into the pan when I do that um, measurement. I'm going to put that into the cold saucepan, I'm going to turn on the hob again trying to acknowledge, uh, check what, what heat setting I've set it to so that I always put it onto the same heat setting because obviously if I really uh, you know, put that hob onto the highest temperature it's going to heat it a lot quicker, Okay, it won't be a fair test so I need to make sure that I do that exactly right. Then once I've turned on the hob I'm going to time how long it takes for bubbles to form on the surface of the water and for it to boil. And I'm going to record that in seconds now. I could use a stop clock, I could use the timer on um, my phone, something like that. I could even just use a clock on the wall, okay? And we need to convert any minutes into seconds, okay? So say for example you had two minutes 30, you've got two lots of 60, add it to the 30, okay, to get your time in seconds and that would be 60. With the additional 60, it'd be 120, add the 30, it'd be 150 seconds that we would record, okay? So we want to convert these time taken to seconds after we've um, recorded that on our stopwatch, okay? So we're gonna fill in this table and we're not gonna do any more with it, okay? We're just gonna enjoy the practical, do those, uh, those, those bits of investigating, collect the results, and then we're gonna just bring this back to school and we'll do all the graphing and analysis at school, okay? So you don't need to do anything more than just enjoy the practical and collect some results. If you find it difficult, maybe you don't have anyone to help you, um, you really don't feel comfortable doing this practical, absolutely fine. Just watch the rest of this video, hopefully you'll watch it all anyway, and you can use my results so that you've got a set of data to take to school and do your graph. So I'm not going to show you everything I do, I'm just gonna show you how to set up, and then I'm gonna show you my full set of results. Here I am now at the hob. I've got my cold pan on the hob. I've chosen, out of all the rings I had to choose from, I've chosen the smallest one, so that's important. That's gonna affect our results as well. I'll always use this one. I've filled my measuring jug with 100 mils of water. Try and keep that flat on the, on the worktop to check and just bend down and look. Yes, I've got 100 mils. I might have needed to top it up or tip a bit out. Try and be as accurate as you can in measuring your, um, your volumes of water. Now, just because I'm going for 100, 200, you can decide what uh, volumes to use yourself. Don't feel that I'm telling you, I'm just suggesting. Okay, and I'm gonna pour that 100 mils of water into my pan, and then it's this hob down here, and what I'm gonna do is click that on, 
and then so that I can always get it in the same position I'm going to have that completely pointing down towards me and that's going to be the setting I use every single time. I've just started my stopwatch so I'm going to keep an eye on that, keep an eye on the surface of the water and when it starts bubbling I'm going to press stop on my stop clock, convert that uh, the minutes into seconds and record that in my table. Okay, I'm then going to empty my water, either allow the pan to cool naturally or I could wash it in the cold tap to get it back down to that start temperature and then I'm going to do my next volume of water. Okay, So there's no point watching the water boil. You can now get on and do your practical. Alternatively, if you want to watch the whole video so that you're fully understanding um, how to do this, that's fine. And then we can look at collecting some results. Okay, starting to steam. I'm going to keep an eye on that. As soon as I get those bubbles forming and I can see that it is boiling away, I will stop my timer. Time for you to get some results or alternatively watch the whole film so that you're happy with what you're doing. Okay, as you can see there, I've got those bubbles cracking through the surface of the water there. I think as I've got it on such a low heat, it's not going to be bubbling um, vigorously all over the place. It is just localised. There's some bubbles on the other side there. You'll know when it's boiling, okay? It should, probably if you put it on a high heat setting, you will get a lot more bubbles than this. But you can see it's definitely boiling. There's bubbles coming to the surface regularly. Um, and so I've stopped my stopwatch. I've got three minutes 36. So that's three lots of 60. And then add the 36 and I'll record that in my results table. As you can see, I've recorded my time taken for the water to boil, the 100 mils of water, in seconds was 216 seconds. So that was the three lots of uh, 60, because there was three minutes, as on the 36 gave us 216 seconds. Like I said before, it's really important, use a cold pan, cold water, same heat on the hob. So I'm going to cool my pan down now, could if I wanted to just let that cool naturally I could if I wanted to cool it using the cold tap just be careful you don't burn yourself here okay then I'm going to repeat the process with 20 mils uh, sorry 200 mils 300 and so on okay the next time you see this I'll have got all my data in there so this is a perfect time for you to now collect your data so I've completed my practical, I've collected all my results, got quite a good set of results, got a bit of a funny thing going on here, we'll identify what's going on there later, why that might have been, maybe at school, um, and also when we draw our graph we'll look at how we um, display data that doesn't quite fit the pattern there, we've got numbers increasing and then going down a bit and then increasing again, so we can look at that one, sometimes that happens and sometimes there's no real explanation, sometimes there's lots of different things we can think of that might have caused that um, strange dip in the pattern there. Okay, so that's all you need to do. Don't draw a graph, we're gonna do that at school. Hope you enjoyed it. I was trying to get you to do some practical work and we have lots more coming your way, um, different practical uh, activities, some a bit more exciting than this one. Um, subscribe and then you'll see all the new videos that come your way, lots of fun things to try at home. And don't forget to take your uh, results table here back to school ready to do some graph drawing and some analysis and if you haven't managed to for whatever reason get your own results then just copy these results now onto your sheet so you've got something to work with in the lesson. Hope you enjoyed that, thanks.